Hello, Dr. G here. Today I want to talk about a really important topic, especially if you're interested in health and energy. And so what is that topic? Mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells. In the typical cell, there can be anywhere from two to 2,500 mitochondria. Our brain tissue, because it's a huge energy hog, has the highest concentration of mitochondria of any tissue in our body. Mitochondria resemble a bacteria in many ways. So one theory of how they became incorporated into our cells is that a long time ago, there was a process of endosymbiosis where mitochondria was engulfed by a cell and was eventually made into a slave of the cell or had a symbiotic relationship. Now, one of the functions of the mitochondria is take the electrons from our food and transport them, like almost like an electrical cable, and this forms a proton flow across the mitochondrial membrane. This proton flow causes a protein, ATP synthase, to rotate on the inner mitochondrial membrane. It spins, and when it spins, it spits out ATPs, kind of like a slot machine spits out coins when you hit the jackpot. In traditional biology, they tell us that ATP is the energy currency for most energy requiring cellular functions in our physiology. But what isn't realized by most biologists and mainstream medicine is that one of ATP's most important functions is to absorb, that's adsorb, onto proteins so that they unfold to expose their hydrophilic, that's water-loving, surfaces for water binding. This water binding produces a negatively charged zone called the exclusion zone, EZ, and another zone filled with hydronium ions, which are positively charged, is on the other side of the EZ. So the bigger your EZ, the stronger your charge. This is the battery that charges life. The mitochondria has hydrophilic proteins on both its inner and outer membranes. Now scientists have discovered that mitochondria become damaged with aging. There was a study looking at the mitochondria of a five-year-old and it showed that the mitochondria had near perfect structure and function. Now contrast this to testing the 90-year-old person where 95% of the mitochondria were damaged. Grandpa's got it tough, let me tell you. Other studies tell us that defective and deficient numbers of mitochondria are connected to virtually all degenerative diseases, particularly diabetes mellitus, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, and congestive heart failure. Now all of these diseases are increasing today and mainstream medicine's treatment of these diseases is poor. It's interesting to note that mitochondria have their own DNA. Now this DNA in the mitochondria codes for proteins that are contained within the mitochondria. Now this DNA is separate from our nuclear DNA that's contained in the nucleus of the cell. Nuclear DNA we inherit from our parents. We get one copy from mom and we get the other copy from dad. Now with the mitochondrial DNA, it all comes from mom. There's no father needed. So guys, you just aren't all that important. Now for general health of our mitochondria, the more electrons we collect will increase the potential and kinetic energy that's stored in our proteins. Now example of these proteins are the ones on the mitochondrial inner membrane organizing system. Now this has been studied extensively. It's abbreviated MINOS. Now MINOS forms these hydration shells of water, which are charge separated and act as a battery. Now food energy that comes in carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are stripped of their electrons through the cytochromes on the mitochondrial membrane. And through that combustion, reactive oxygen species are produced. Now this includes superoxide, peroxide, and the hydroxyl free radical. 
Now it's good that our mitochondria contains the enzyme superoxide dismutase, which takes care of the superoxide ion and hydrogen peroxide. But unfortunately, there's no enzyme to quench the hydroxyl free radical. And when the hydroxyl free radical reacts, that's called the Fenton reaction. Now the hydroxyl free radical damages any adjacent structures, including proteins, fats, or DNA, or other cell structures. So it contributes to disease and aging. So how can we improve our mitochondrial func function through our lifestyle? Well, one is to drink more water. Remember how important water is. Water is what creates the battery by charge separating. Now it's important that the water not have fluoride in it. Many cities fluoridate their water. So don't drink tap water that's been fluoridated. Now another source of halogens, which fluorides a halogen, and bromide is a halogen. Bromide is found in processed grains and it's also used in hot tubs and pool cleaning chemicals. Now next, we want to maintain a diverse microflora in the gut. And we talk about that on other video posts. Now being around lots of plants that give off oxygen is also excellent. We need oxygen to accept the electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. Now without oxygen, there would be no electron flow. This is why deep breathing and meditation also help. Now it's also important to decrease non-native EMF exposure and we discuss that elsewhere as well. You want to eat an electron dense food which contains healthy fats and marine food sources. Exposing yourself to cold increases your electron flow. Getting out of nature and grounding and camping and touching trees and touching rocks, all that helps. Exposure to near infrared lights increase our EZ and water which improve our redox potential. Now there's supplements which have been shown to help the mitochondria like carnosine, our lipoic acid, and coenzyme Q10. Now I want to mention another compound and that's pyroloquinoline quinone tongue teaser we call PQQ for short. It's a recently discovered substance that is probably a vitamin. When animals are deprived of it, they have stunted growth and they develop disease. And when it's given back, these problems are reversed. So it looks like it's a vitamin. Now this is found in some uh, or many fruits and vegetables. The PQQ molecule is involved in electron transfer, transfer in the mitochondria. And it has the advantage of being extremely stable. It's an extremely stable molecule. So it's not affected by reactive oxygen species. Now experimentally, it's been shown to stimulate the growth of brand new mitochondria through activation of gene expression in the mitochondrial DNA. PQQ neutralizes superoxide and the hydroxyl free radicals I talked about a minute ago. It's also been shown to safeguard a gene whose malfunction has been related to an early step in the development of Parkinson's disease. Studies have shown that PQQ limits brain damage in stroke and heart attack models in animals. Other studies show it prevents the formation of amyloid beta structures, which are involved in Alzheimer's disease. Studies have been done supplementing PQQ at a dose of 20 milligrams a day in humans, showing improved cognitive function in middle-aged people, meaning your brain worked a little bit better. Your mitochondrial health is a common pathway for many of the neural and other degenerative diseases that we face that make our modern life a living hell. The most important thing for you to do now is start collecting electrons and evaluate your exposures to see if you're at risk for losing electrons to your environment. Now supplements like L-carnitine, R-alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, and now PQQ might be ways to mitigate the damage caused by a bad environment and the aging process. And this is an option to the side effect laden drugs that are often 
of little benefit for these degenerative diseases. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel.